Today our topic is going to be allergies, basically. Um, when I came up with this, it was coming on, seems like allergy season, if you want to call allergy season a season, like sports or anything. Uh, it's either the beginning of the spring or the beginning of the summer and the end of the summer. So it seems like either May or August, depending on how fortunate you are or unfortunate. So a lot of people can ask simple questions when it comes to allergies of, what am I allergic to? Food, is it pollen, air, animals, grass, anything? You know what? I, I think of, as I was doing this, I just kept thinking of people that I've known and I've met throughout life that are like, I'm allergic to eight different types of grass, or I'm allergic to dust, or I'm allergic to, basically people are allergic to everything anymore. You can find somebody who's allergic to everything. I think the other day I was uh, online and I saw on MSN there was an article, not an article, but it was one of those slideshow things where it tells you all the seven different strange things that people are allergic to. And one of them was water, and one of them was um, cotton, and just different stuff like that that makes you think. It just makes you think. And a lot of people, it, like, it's amazing to me, are you excited? Um, is that they're accepting of this stuff once they get it. You know, somebody says, well, you're allergic to this, and they just say, okay, then that's what I am. I'm allergic to water. Or I'm allergic to peanuts. And nobody asks the question, why? Why am I allergic to this? And that's what we're going to talk about. Another question a lot of people ask this time of a year is, is the pollen count high today? You know, you can get on weather.com and check the weather, the humidity, and the pollen count, which is brought to you by Zyrtec or whoever else. What should I take for these symptoms? That's everybody's questions. Those are our general questions. But here's our different round of questions that we should be asking is, what is the immune response and why am I having these allergies? Why? That's a big question, why? Why so many allergies? Why are there peanut allergies and dairy allergies and every other allergy? You know, we're all breathing the same air, so it must be genetic. It's gotta be our genes. I inherited these allergies because of bad luck from parents. So basically the big question of why do I get them, not just accepting the fact of I have hay fever. So that's what we're going to talk about. Well, the first thing we can blame is our genetics. So when we talk about genetics, we have everybody wants to point the finger at something else. You know? So when it just comes down to the, to the fact of allergies and my dad had allergies, and so I have allergies, and so my brother had allergies, and stuff like that. We got to look at the fact that the human genome has not changed since the beginning of time. You know, our genes have not changed. So when we're talking genetics, we have genotype and phenotype. So genotype is just the genetic code that says my lung cell is a lung cell, and then our phenotype is the expression to say I have green eyes. But our overall genetics have not changed. A lot of it is due to lifestyle. A lot of it is due to outside factors, but we just simply say, I had allergies, my dad had allergies, so now my children have allergies. But that's not the way it is. We don't pass on this stuff, because if it's something like that, if it's our genes, or if it's just the fact that we should all be allergic to air and pollen and whatever, we're all breathing the same air. You know, how come we never had such a big if our genetics, if the human gene has not changed in the last 20,000, however many years since the beginning of time, that's a different thing. But if the, the human gene has not changed that much since then, how come back when people older than I am were kids, we didn't have peanut allergies as often as prevalent. We didn't have tree nut allergies. When I went to school, I could take a peanut butter and jelly sandwich to lunch room and not be forced to eat in a different room. Or kids could do the same thing. So why do we have more of a prevalence of that? We'll talk a little bit about that. And we can look at this. We have things to consider, and that is just the fact that our body is not junk. We are not unfortunate. We are not bad luck. We are not designed to work inefficiently. We have this well-made machine that is supposed to work and do what it's supposed to do without even a thought. It's a miracle. We don't get sick, we do sick. You know, it's something that we always say around here, and something that even if you go on our website and look back on a lot of our videos, 
a lot of this is going to have correlation to previous videos, so I'm not going to dive into that stuff as much before. But it's, it's again, the, the fact that we're not unfortunate. It's something that we have done, decisions that we have made our lifestyle that has made us that way. Again, we're just designed to be healthy. Our bodies are designed to adapt. It adapts to the fact that when I walk outside right now, it's a little warmer, and so my body's going to do certain things to cool its temperature so I can maintain this core temperature between 98.6 degrees around. So 98.6 degrees is a very average temperature. So our regular body temperatures can range anywhere from 97 to 99. But it's really interesting that once anybody gets above 99, it's all of a sudden a fever. That's still normal-ish. So we're still good. But our body are, is always adapting. You know, so anytime that we have something outside of that, a symptom that shows us that we're not adapting, it means that there's something not working in us, and that's what we're talking about. The immune system, big player in our allergies, and why we have allergies and allergic reactions. So our immune system is our barriers. We have skin, we have, that's our big barrier, skin. You know, nothing gets through to our bloodstream without going through the skin unless it's injected. You know, unless we eat it or ingest it or just somehow inside out. You know, we have our skin, we have, everybody always wonders why we have nose hairs, why we have ear hairs and why they're there, but they're there to prevent anything from the outside to get in. You know, it's there for a reason. Tonsils and adenoids, that's our very first defense mechanism right there against airborne things. You know, so that's a big part of our lymphatic system and our lymph nodes, they're there to, to filter out the junk, you know, so it's like a big air filter. So back in the day, probably when I was a kid, it was very common to have your tonsils and adenoids removed. You know, at my age, people were shocked that I still have them. And then they realized that those were so important as being the first line of defense, you know, your infantry and your body and army against um, airborne infection or anything like that. You know, so they're seeing a rise in, in asthma, they're seeing a rise in allergies because they don't have that stuff to filter everything there. You know, but everybody's saying, well, the tonsils and their adenoids are swollen, so we, we got to remove them. Well, what if your eyeball is swollen? <laughs> it's swollen for a reason. You have this gland that's working and functioning to do what it's supposed to do. But they see, at the time, they saw no real benefit to it and everybody can live without it. You know, everybody can live without their eye, but we're not gonna cut it out because it's swollen. You know, you have, it's like a muscle. It's, it's exercising and it's doing its thing and it's fighting off something and it's a working organ in the body. Why would we cut it out right now? But that's what the thought process is now. You know, so we hit this lull where we're not cutting out tonsils and adenoids as much because they discovered that. But now we have something, I forget what their exact terminology for it, but it's basically, um, I'm drawing a blank for everything. It's where, uh, just like when, when people snore, somebody help me out. What's it called? Sleep apnea? Yes, yeah. obstructive sleep apnea, because the tonsils and adenoids get so swollen right there that kids are basically having sleep apnea at night. But it's the same idea, and so now that's the reasoning for cutting them out. But what's the purpose behind them? Why are they getting swollen? Because they're fighting off something that the body's trying to fight, trying to defend itself. Mm -hmm. So why would you cut that out? You know, so what I've, and this is very, it hit home to me in the sense that it happened to me, but I, have, I had a patient that was like this. I had a patient that came in and then they told me about their children that were saying, well, he said a lot of his tonsils out in two days. And I said, please just give me a shot. You know, and you could, and it was the whole thing. You could hear him snore from the room away, six years old, and sometimes he would gasp for breath because of the obstructed airway, because of the tonsils. Made those adjustments, no problem. It's swollen for a reason. So we can talk about why we're here chiropractically and the subluxation that was there to put pressure on that nerve and made it so those tonsils wouldn't function the way they're supposed to. And we can talk about how getting the pressure off that nerve made them work the way that they should. It's amazing when that happens. So I love what I do. The thymus. The thymus is a little 
gland organ, if you can call it. It's kind of egg shaped and it fits just right about here. And that is responsible for a lot of kicking out the immune cells at earlier ages in life. We also have our spleen that produces more immune cells and, and immune system cells, bone marrow, lymph nodes, lymph nodes filter and flush everything out. So that's why movement is so important because just like the circulatory system that has a muscle in it called your heart that pumps everything through, our muscles in our body pumps the lymph. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. The nervous system controls and coordinates every single thing in the body. As long as that thing's working, you're good too. But the important thing about this is that that's why we can't cut out the tonsils. You know, we can't remove certain things and expect everything to work the way that it should because it's all just one very orchestrated symphony. You know, it's, it's, it works as a team and it all works for the greater good. You know, there's not one thing more important in here than something else. They all work together to make that body function, to make the immune system function. You know, so football season's coming up, and I like to think about this as a football team. You know, we have very important players on the football team to make that team work. So Iowa football, most importantly, is happening this weekend. And they're trying, before this first game, to make their team work in unison. So, you know, defense is not more important than offense. Offense is more important than defense. The quarterback can be fantastic in the star player, but he can't do anything without his offensive lineman. Same thing with the defensive line. So if we do anything to disrupt any of this, you know, we can not have our star quarterback. We can't have our outside tackle or whatever else. You know, so when we're just talking about all that stuff, that's where it's important. But the also thing is just the fact that these things need to develop. You know, so it's like going to football training camp. You can't just take a kid out of high school and throw him in the NFL and expect him to, to be good. Just like you can't take that senior out of high school and throw him to his freshman year of Iowa football because it's so amazing and expect him to be outstanding. And it's just like taking that walk and they all have to go through training camp, they all have to lift weights and they all have to gain weight and they all have to improve their skills to be outstanding. And it's just like with the bottom, the, the body has to be taxed. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. I think it sidetracked a little bit, so I apologize. Allergens. Allergens stimulate our immune response. Allergens are something that is just foreign to the body that comes in and tells the body, hello, I do not belong here. Or at least the body recognizes that. So we have our seasonal allergies, we have our food allergies, we have our pet allergies. The body's reaction, so our typical immune response is something comes in, the body recognizes it as a foreign invader, and then it remembers it for next time. Well, it attacks it at that time too. But the biggest thing is it remembers it for next time. So when we're talking about the body has a memory, when it sees an allergen, when it sees pollen or hay fever, hay fever comes in, hay fever is whatever you call it, when it sees pollen, pollen comes in, the body says, not normal, you shouldn't be here. And then what we have is something called, especially for something like that, it's called a mast cell. So that mast cell is our immune cell that sees that hay fever and it takes a mental picture of it and recognizes it and says, next time that thing comes around, we're going to attack it. So what's, on, what's inside the mast cells are something that's called histamine. Right? So when that mast cell has that mental picture of what pollen looks like, the pollen comes in, next time it comes around, it releases that histamine and that histamine does its work. And histamine is amazing. Histamine increases inflammation, histamine increases circulation, it increases mucus and everything. So everything that this time of year, everybody freaks out because of their itchy, watery eyes and their runny nose and their need for mucinex and everything else is fighting the body's own natural defenses because that mucus slows everything up. It's like throwing glue down on the road and then that pollen and everything else can't get farther into the body. That inflammation is there to slow everything else down too and that circulation, that increased circulation right there is to make it so everything else can get there to, to help out the rest of the immune system, the immune response, and white blood cells, and everything can get there to help the body out. And so it's all this amazing thing to bring on this healthy immune response, but we think is our symptom to fight and combat. So we go get our decongestant and our antihistamine to make it so that it doesn't happen. But again, we gotta be asking the question of why is it happening? You know, so how come we can have somebody who has really bad allergies right now step outside 
and breathe this air and be sneezing and runny eyes and everything else, and somebody else can walk out and breathe that air too and be just fine. It's all happening because of how that body is reacting and how that body is functioning. Dysfunction for lots of different reasons. Dysfunction for things like lifestyle. So it's not bad luck and bad genes. It happens because of our sugar and our dairy and our junk, basically. You know, you think the Sunday paper rolls around and you open up the ads to see what to get your coupons for and everything, and you can get stuff for pizza and Lunchables and stuff that's not food. But that's what we give our families and not family. But a lot of people that standard average American use their families and gives their kids. And then they wonder why everybody's so sick all the time. Because when we eat sugar, it bogs down the immune system because that sugar is fighting for the receptor site for vitamin C, which boosts the immune system. So vitamin C can't take it because sugar is there, and so the immune system is no longer boosted. Boosted has been boosted. Dairy. Dairy is another topic that we've already discussed, but dairy is just everybody's working today. You know, the human body is not meant to take on cow's milk. And that is mainly because of bovine albumin, if I remember correctly from the last time that I did the dairy talk. That's another talk that we did a while ago when we talked a lot about it. But basically it's a big milk protein that is there to make a little cow into a big cow. And so when that happens, and when we ingest that, it's a foreign invader in the body, and that increases mucus, and that increases everything. That seems like an allergic reaction to some people, but also we have clinical, and we have subclinical. So clinical is obvious symptoms. You know, we get mucusy, we, we have an allergic reaction. So we get the But we also have subclinical, which means that somebody can drink all the dairy they want, and just kind of be snuffly or, you know, not even notice that they have symptoms. So basically, that there's still physiologically things happening to the body, but they don't know. It. So that's why it's sub, like submarine as well. Make sense? So our lifestyle and just our, our, our standard American diet is bogging down our immune system and making it so we are reacting to stuff like this. You know, so when somebody comes in and says, my allergies are killing me, what should I do? I'm saying, don't eat sugar, don't eat stuff that turns into sugar. Don't drink milk. And some people walk out of that room really depressed because they're sad that I just ruined their cake and most of their diet. Exercise is very important because it boosts the immune system. You know, just like it trains your body and strengthens your body, it also strengthens strengthens that immune system. You know, it strengthens everything that's going to kick out those immune cells and that white blood cell and everything that's going to increase that immunity. It's also going to move that lymph. You know, so our lymphatic system is just our big drainage system of the body. And it only moves when we move. We were cruising tonight right? because it's just all really simple physiology. And it boils down to it. Oh, just kidding. So, this is why, actually, this is really important to me. And this is why I talk a lot about and know more, not more, No, have studied allergies, allergic reactions. Everybody sees the picture up here. I know it's kind of small. So what we have is a rash. You know, most everybody talks about allergies. They talk about, you know, just the hay fever and, and, and everything because that's just this time of year. But a lot of people don't even think that this is an allergy. You know, so what we have is a little six-month-old with a rash that entirely covers the upper part of the body. You know, so little adorable six month old was mine three and a half years ago. So what we had was I was in the very beginning, I'll tell you guys a little story, the little very beginning portions of chiropractic school. Just finished my first year. We had an adorable little baby. He was awesome. Still is. His name was Will. And uh, about three months of age he was breastfeeding and you know, it was winter and it was December, I remember. He started to get just that little kind of rashy ring that some kids get right in the middle of the neck back. You know, and a lot of parents think that's just because of the drool that kids have. And that's what we thought. You know, until that, that started to, to spread and to spread and to spread until we started itching here. And basically, it just eventually looked like he had, actually, this is one thing that looked good right here. 
where it started to look like on that part of his back all over his front back of his body and then the crux of his arm and the crux of his knee. And so as a parent and as a, as a very early on chiropractic student, you know, you look at a skin thing like that and the first thing you think is he needs lotion. So you conjure up as many lotions as you can and then you change the detergent and then you go find more lotions. And then just whatever you can do to, to ease that skin. And then finally it hit me when I was talking to a chiropractor who had been out in practice much longer than I have because I was still in school. And he was like, well, when was the last time he was adjusted? Because when he was adjusted, he was still a baby and he was doing just great. And it was, he got adjusted right before we went home for Christmas and everything looked great. And then he was like, well, we'll see him in like a couple months, just check him out, which I know better now. But this started showing up and it didn't even dawn on me. I don't know why. So we started getting him adjusted. And this is what's amazing, is just that the body is expressing itself the way that it's supposed to. You know, we weren't getting him adjusted just to treat this stuff, but also just because we knew that something was not right. So he got adjusted and it started to clear up right away. That's, that's what's amazing. But the biggest thing is, is that there were still some that lingered. There were still some that lingered just a little bit. You know, so right now he's about three months when, when he was getting adjusted. Well, four months old, five months old. So this has been going on for about a month and a half. It looks a lot worse now because this is when he finally took pictures. So it was getting better. And then we were like, okay, now we got to change something dietary. You know, so maybe it is something dietary that's happening. He's not eating much. He's just breastfeeding. He's only that old. He didn't eat any food. But it's something that my wife would eat. You know, so it's not that she's bad and she's a bad person, but it was actually dairy. You know, so we cut all dairy out of her diet and he was getting still some of the proteins and some of the dairy stuff through her breast milk. And once that happened, we saw an even more drastic increase, or decrease of the skin stuff. But the amazing thing was is that there was still some that lingered. So he starts crawling, and this is fun, this is this really, I enjoy it. This is awesome, right here. So he starts crawling, and everybody's seen that little baby that crawls and they kind of get that little hitch in their giddy up right there. It's almost like they're kickstarting a motorcycle while they crawl. Here, you guys watch this video, if you can. I'm sure you can see it right there. So that's him, and he's crawling. And you can see as he starts crawling, well, if he can't, that just around the base of his neck and around the front of his neck, he still has a little red ring just around there. But while he crawls, he gets that, I feel bad making him play back, but he gets that little hitch right there in that hip. And so most parents look at that and they think, oh, it's adorable, look at how that little kid crawls, and it really is kind of cute, and it's almost vulnerable when it goes away. But then you, until the chiropractor in you thinks mechanically there's something not right with those hips right there. Okay? And you can see right there, the base of that neck, how it's just all red and dry. Fast forward, after some adjustments, and watch him grow. So here's him crawling again. You can see that the skin looks better. And he crawls more. And so the biggest difference that we saw is that all of a sudden it just cleared up, gone. And it was from getting that nervous system working right from those adjustments. Making sure everything in his little body was expressing itself and working the way that it should. As you watch a little bit, he still had a tendency just from from a habit of just almost sticking that leg, leg out, and then he'd catch himself and start going again doesn't have a problem anymore. But the thing is, is just that, we'll talk a little bit more about it in a minute, is that he kind of didn't have it rough, he didn't have a rough childhood or anything like that, but he was dealt kind of a tougher card, and we'll talk more about that. Just a minute, just because if I jump ahead a little bit, I should have meshed it together a little better. So a lot of our strategies is just Avoidance, all right? So if I have hay fever, if I have 
pollen allergy or a dairy allergy, so yeah, we should all avoid dairy because it's, watch the milk no, doesn't, doesn't do body, doesn't body back video. We'll talk more about dairy now. If you can't get on our website and watch that, otherwise, that's another 45 minutes. <laughs> but, I mean, how do we avoid it? You know, so we can get on the, the weather channel and see what the pollen count is today, and they say, oh, it's going to be really high, it's going to be like 98% or however they count it, you might want to stay inside. All right, what am I supposed to do? How do, you, how do you call into work and say, sorry, I can't come in the pollen count today? No, you can't avoid it. It's air. It's oxygen. You know, when we're all, it's nature. It's created to be beautiful, and we're supposed to enjoy it. How come we can't go outside and, without sitting in the rubbing our eyes? You know, we can't avoid it. We shouldn't have to. You know, we shouldn't have to avoid it. Little kids shouldn't have to avoid ants on a log and peanut butter. I don't mean real ants, but, you know, just anything like that. So avoidance is just the wrong idea. So it makes us think that our health is comes from the outside in instead of the inside out. And our expression of health comes from the inside out. You know, so if it can be affected from the outside in, it's maybe because something on the inside is not working the way that it should. Everybody wants to medicate. But as we were saying, when it comes to symptoms, symptoms are an expression of the body's adaptation. You know, so if your arm is bleeding, it is a symptom from the cut that it has just been given. But it is bleeding because it's doing what it's supposed to do. So when it pushes out the blood, it's trying to push everything out to make it the wound clean so the body can start to heal right there. You know, so that fresh blood right there is just everything that it's doing to clean itself. You know, so when our body has a fever, like that, all day, um, when our body has a fever, it's because it's trying to cook whatever is there. You know, a lot of parents freak out and they think, okay, Timmy has a fever of 101, you know, but we're not allowing his body to do what it's supposed to do when we get him down. You know, because it's happening for a reason. So everything that happens, you've got to ask the question of why. You know, why is it happening? Why does he have a fever? Okay, well, something, his body's reacting to something, and it's working, and it's trying to overcome this thing. Let's let it overcome. You know, because when we hit 102 degrees in the body, then we start kicking out interferon, which is the most powerful antibiotic that the body has. So 102 is a good strong fever. But you just got to watch it, and, and I'm not saying just let your kid's fever rise, but the body also has mechanisms for adaptation that are in the hypothalamus, the little center in the brain, that will not let any outside um, Stimulus raise the body's temperature over 160 degrees. The only exceptions are cancer and um, dehydration. That's why it's always really important to be hydrated anytime there's a fever. You know, so it's not the risk of anything else other than just making sure that the body is hydrated. So even just with the medication, suppressing the symptoms. You know, so just the medication will suppress the symptoms, and so it's not to say that drugs do not work. You know, so if there is a kid right now who's in a school and he's exposed to peanuts and he shouldn't be, he goes into anaphylactic shock, I hope somebody has an EpiPen because it will work. I'm not saying that they do not work unless you just throw all that stuff away. But we can't turn it into a lifestyle. Drugs work in our crisis situation. They work by forcing physio physiology in the body. They do not work to increase health. So how come... If that EpiPen is going to save somebody's life by giving them a shot of adrenaline because of a bee sting or because of whatever they can have that anaphylaxis with, how come they just don't take it daily just to make sure it's in their body? Because it's a life-saving tool intended for crisis care. So why do we take other stuff chemically daily to have our body be healthy? It doesn't make sense. If we can take a drug to make a sick man healthy, I just, it made sense in a second, and then I lost what I was saying. If we could take a drug that's intended to make a sick man healthy, how come a healthy man can't make it without making him sick? Now did that catch on? Yeah, okay. I was starting to say it, and then I was thinking about it while I was saying it, and I lost it. You know, but even when we do take our medications like that, we still have the underlying cause of the problem of why is it? You know, physiologically, we are not compatible with synthetic drugs because it doesn't work. You know, so instead of
taking care of every other symptom, then our body is forced to take care of that chemistry as well. You know, so anytime there's anything toxic in the body or anything that the body really has to process, like alcohol or, or drugs or anything like that, or ibuprofen or Tylenol, it has to go through the liver. And the liver gets taxed, and that's when we get, other than the alcohol example, that's when we get non-alcoholic liver cirrhosis because the liver has worked so hard that it just quits. So the important thing is just our immune development. So our immune system is that first line of defense to make it so everything works the way that it should. So we don't get those allergic reactions. You know, so everything should be those allergies. And so it happens in utero. So it happens when little baby is developing and getting all its characteristics from mom, so it starts to learn and get immune function and immune system stuff, information from mom. The more that she's encountering other stuff, the more that the baby starts to encounter stuff because they share a lot of things. You know, so there's different um, immunoglobulins that go across the placenta and go across the barriers, what's called IgG, that's one of them, that goes across the placental barrier to the baby and the baby gets that from the mother. And our birth delivery process, so natural vaginal births start to kickstart that immune system because we're starting, there's a process just within the body that's a natural process. And everybody can agree that a natural birth, that's why they call it natural, is the way to go for the baby. Yes, there are situations where, you know, a C-section or something else is warranted. I know because looking back at our adorable little rashy baby right there, that was another situation right there. You know, so if we go farther back to his story, he was in labor for 40 hours. Labor did not progress and he was in, he had a C-section. He didn't happen himself, but he was delivered via, C via cesarean. You know, so in that delivery, his body did not go through that natural process to where it's changing from inside to outside, and it stresses the immune system, and there's different chemical reactions that stress the immune system, and so all of a sudden, he's like, hello world, here I am. You know, so his body didn't get forced to go through those things to develop that immune system. You know, so we skipped a step. You know, because he was in labor for so long, then he was in the NICU, he was the largest baby in the NICU for a week because he had an increased inflammatory marker at the time. And remember, I was very early in school, and anything that those docs told me, I was like, sounds good, what you gotta do. You know, looking back, I probably would have changed a little bit. But he was in the NICU for so long on antibiotics, just in case. You know, so we throw antibiotics in him, and so that just messes with his body's chemistry and physiology, and so he's developing this, a lot of immune function comes with our natural flora within our gut. As we take antibiotics, antibiotics don't naturally know just to go wherever there's an infection or where it thinks it's an infection. It's like dropping a napalm bomb within the body and it destroys every sort of bacteria in the body, good or bad. And so his immune system already just didn't get started to a good stuff. And so that's why gradually we had that reaction in dairy right there. And still, he's a very, not very, he's a pretty sensitive kid. You know, when it comes to stuff like that, he's good with, he doesn't really do dairy, so I can't say he's good with dairy, but whatever. But when he has encountered dairy, because, I mean, he's a little kid, he's, he's had pizza, I'm sorry, people who are watching this video and everyone else here, he's had pizza before, but he still does okay. You know, but anytime <clears throat> May or so rolls around, when the weather really changes from spring to summer, he has a pretty good allergic reaction just with the stuffy runny nose and his eyes get kind of puffy and everything right there. And so we're, so, I mean, he gets adjusted and everything and we're still working, I mean, that's our story. We're working on re-strengthening and re-boosting his immune system from scratch because he got, he skipped a lot of these things. You know, so his immune system didn't function in that cascade and that sequential order that his body was designed to do. So he missed out on a lot of that stuff. But he got his spine checked and that's important. You know, to make it so that nervous system can function and tell that, that thymus what to do, to tell that spleen what to do, to tell the bone marrow to keep producing. You know, the nervous system controls every cell, organ, tissue, muscle, and body. So 
So when he gets that spine check and he gets that adjusting, gets the pressure off that nerve, it helps him deal with that stuff more. You know, so our environment, kids are kids are supposed to get sick. You know, you can't cleanse the environment of everything with antibacterial hand soap. You know, there's Purell everywhere you go. If you want to go get your shopping cart, you better Purell it really quick because otherwise your food's gonna get nasty. You know, it's everywhere. But you can't sterilize everything because then there's nothing to challenge our bodies. The immune system's like a muscle and you have to challenge it. Otherwise it won't grow. You know, so when we sterilize everything because we've become such a hypochondriac and scared of everything society that something's gonna get us, then we start getting those super bugs. We start getting MRSA. I mean, people die from MRSA every day in the hospital and we have created it. Science has even admitted that. It's because of our over antibiotic, anti everything. You know what? Earlier this year, there were articles coming out that kids who eat dirt have higher immune function than kids who don't. I'm not saying to go and eat dirt, but it's just expose yourself to the elements so your body can learn and recognize what to fight. Like I said, fevers. Fevers are outstanding. You know, in our house, my wife uses a thermometer because I don't care. She uses it just for peace of mind, but if there's a fever, we know how to handle it. Baby gets adjusted, baby gets watered, baby's well hydrated, and they're still alive. You know, it's not ignorance, I don't say that, when I probably sound ignorant, saying, oh, fever, whatever. You know, but we know how the body works, and we know that everything in the body is happening for you. You know, there's other things to look at, yes, if there's fevers and other symptoms, you know, that you know, projectile vomiting, then something's probably wrong. You know, we got to think about that, or if it's after a fall or something like that. But just in everyday scenarios, oh, little Johnny has a fever, now he has an ear infection, let's give him an antibiotic, let's give him a towel, let's bring that fever down, and get that ear infection gone, then you're not allowing the body to do what it's supposed to do. Lifestyle, just as we were talking, you know, it's our diet, our exercise, everything. You know what I mean? So that's our just our development of our immune system, just helping strengthen everything. So I'm not talking just little kids, but how we change right now. You know, so even just right now, if it's like I suffer allergies and they're really bad, do this stuff. Minus the delivery in the year ago, because we can't go back that far. But we can get our spine checked, you know, we can still expose ourselves to environment. We can avoid antibiotics. We can avoid so that's the stuff that we should avoid. But we should, I mean, avoid the lousy foods and, and exercise. Not avoid exercise. Exercise, but avoid lousy food. You know, so our, our interference is just, again, talking delivery. It's taxing on a baby who goes from spa for nine months very warm, cozy, 98.6 degree environment in the birth process and out to the world. You know, the very first subluxation we say is birth. Doesn't matter how natural that birth is, there is a change that's physiologically happening to that baby and physically happening to that baby that's gonna somewhere put pressure on a nerve. We've got all these little spines. We've got to fix it. Subluxation right there. And it doesn't matter what age. From the womb to the tomb, somebody needs chiropractic care. If you're not getting it, then your body's not working the way that it should. Antibiotics interfere with how the body works. We just discussed that. You know, antibiotics destroy good and bad bacteria. You know, so we can look at any research that says, I mean, earlier as I said, anywhere from 60 to 90 percent of the body's immune function comes from the gut, the bacteria in the gut. And so when we take antibiotics, you better be taking a probiotic afterwards. If, you, you know, if you're talking to me, I'm just going to tell you, if it were me, don't take the antibiotic. But I can't make that decision for you. That's why I try and educate you now. There's nothing that the body can't handle and the body can't fight with its own antibiotics that doesn't challenge, that, that won't go against the body. And it just means, you know, so that's our interference for, for allergic reaction. And so as we were talking about just how that cascade of, of the mast cell and the histamine and how the 
The histamine makes the body react with our inflammation and mucus. Antihistamines is going exactly against what the body's trying to do. It's all doing it for a reason. It's all doing it to help you. And so if we take our antihistamines, then you're shutting off the body's defense. Surgery, tonsil, adenoids, removing those. It takes out first line of defense for that upper respiratory tract. That's what it is. Don't let it happen. And if you know anybody who's going to do that, have them call me. I will help them. Toxicity in the body just interferes with everything. It interferes with basic physiology of the body. Deficiency. If your body is deficient in anything, then it's not going to work the way that it should. You know? So that's why we do talk supplements. And right now I could talk supplements. You know, but as long as we supplement for the right reasons, then we don't have to talk about supplements. You know, so if we have our basic supplements, I can tell you right now that the basic supplements for us would be a good multivitamin and mineral, fish oil, probiotic, and vitamin D. That should, that should be your standard supplement because Let's face it, nutrition, A, not everybody is 100% on all the time, as much as we would like to think we are. And so we got to get some of our nutrition through something like supplementation. You know, and if you pick an orange from the tree in Iowa, which we don't have any, but if you pick an orange from the tree, an orange today is not different, or not very much the same from an orange in the 1930s. You know, because of how we grow them, because of the pesticides, because of just the environment, you know, the soil is not the same from way back when because of how farming has changed. You know, so everything's different. So the nutrients in, in everything that we get in our food because of how they are grown, even if we get the top notch organic everything, is still not the same as what it used to be. You know, so we do have to supplement a little more these days. You know, but still that's just for foundational health. You know, a lot of people want to know supplements as in what can I supplement to take for my allergies? What can I supplement to take for my knee pain? What can I supplement then at that point, you might as well just still call it medication because we're still medicating for a symptom instead of supplementing for health. You know, so when we supplement, we supplement all the time to make it for our overall healthiness, to make our body work the way that it should so we don't have to take something for our health, so we don't have to supplement something else for whatever ailment you want to talk about. I can't think of any ailments right now. I don't have it. You know, but just any deficiency right there, as long as the body's not deficient because of our nutrition and everything that we give it, then we shouldn't be talking a lot of these problems. You know, and yes, there are supplements for those situations. I'm, say, I'm not saying that you can't do those things, but that shouldn't be our mindset and our goal. I can go keep living my life and everything and take whatever juice the guy down the street sells because that's going to help with my joints in the morning. you got to change your lifestyle and change your your exercise and your dietary habits and everything else like that before we can start doing that. Sickness, that's just a big interference in general. You know, just all this is stressful to the immune system. So if you are a patient here in the office, we talk about what gives us subluxation. Subluxation is our pressure on the nerve from the spine that makes it so the immune system or the nervous system will not function the way that it should. We get subluxation from thoughts, traumas, and toxins. You know, so negative thoughts that stress us out, stress, stress itself affects the body physiologically. And that's another topic that we get. So you can watch a video on that. That's be another hour that we're sitting here. You know, traumas, that's just obvious physical stress on the body. Yeah, that's going to screw it up and put pressure on the nerve. And then toxins, just when we're talking. Diet, food, what we drink. You know, environmental toxins. We can't avoid all of those, but the ones that we choose to do, we might as well be avoiding them as much as we can. And basically, for allergies, just increase your immune function naturally through everything. That's it. The body knows how to handle it. Body doesn't need any help from outside sources. It just needs to be functioning the way that it should. It needs no interference. And that's why we're here. To learn more about that, we make it so it works. That's my story. Any questions?